So we've just talked about possibly using Wolbachia to make mosquitoes not transmit viruses. There are also strategies for putting new genes into mosquitoes that would even lead a whole species to become extinct. Is that feasible? Um, mathematically, it's feasible. Uh, it's CRISPR, this thing that most people have heard about now. It's a, a gene system that they found in bacteria. So bacteria use it to chop up the DNA of invaders? Bacteria, and... yes. Bacteria used it to defend themselves against phage and maybe plasmids. Mm -hmm. But it's very portable. You can clone it into all sorts of things and, and it, you make it as a DNA scissors where you absolutely control what part of the chromosome it's going so to cut. So it looks at a spot, snips it, and you can put in a new gene. You can put in a new gene or the cell may try and fix the cut DNA, and when it does, it copies um, what's on the, op the other chromosome from it. But you can set up a system where um, very easily you put a uh, gene, well, you put a CRISPR complex into a chromosome, and because of a combination of how CRISPR behaves and how the cell behaves, it will spread through a population without any effort on your part at all. And you could make it spread so that, for instance, all the offspring are males and the whole species dies off. You could do that, potentially. There are other ways you can, in theory, make it so the species will die off. Or you could just knock out a gene that the species doesn't necessarily need, but maybe a virus needs that gene to get transmitted. So there are lots of applications here, from extreme ones of causing extinction to less extreme ones of just you know, having um, the gene drive system sp spread through a population and change it slightly. Has this ever been done for any species in the wild? Not with CRISPR that I know of. It's probably going to be done very soon, but in um, there was a test of gene drive extinction mechanisms in 1977 by Terry Little. He used uh, fruit fly cage populations. He didn't engineer things in the usual way we think about, but he took advantage of a naturally occurring um, gene drive system in fruit flies, and he used... A segregation disorder? Segre or? It's called segregation disorder, and he irradiated a bunch of flies and eventually got something where the Y chromosome was hooked up with the gene drive system, and then at that point he was able to set up cage populations and test the idea that you could use certain types of gene drive to cause species extinction. And, and this is the one that was inspired by Bill Hamilton, right? That study was inspired, yes, so Terry Little's first study was in 77, and it was inspired by Bill Hamilton's paper published in 1967. So what an amazing example of really deep basic theory um, turning into something that could be a world-changing technology. Yes, and I remember reading Hamilton's paper where he proposed in it that um, he might have a mechanism there to cause species extinction, and I thought, oh, that's impossible, right? We're never going to be able to make it happen. Right. But there are risks to this. Two kinds, right? One that might a species might evolve around it, and the other is it might go where we don't want it. So I see the risk as the... Uh, in terms of semantics, I would say risks are this thing gets out of hand. We create one of these, we put it into a mosquito that we want to control, and suddenly it jumps to another species. And like bumblebee, like bees. Bees, you know. So we can. I mean, if if we did wipe out bees, the impact on human agriculture would be incalculable. Probably, probably pretty profound, because lots of the things we eat require pollination by insects. So pollinators, you know, it could jump to other things. We don't have a good sense of how DNA moves around in the environment. The other thing that I find scary about this is it's pretty easy to do. Uh, we're to the point now where an undergrad class could design these things and probably implement them. It's, it's that easy. This is frightening. So, um, but the other thing you pointed out is that there's another outcome and I don't know whether you call it risky or not, but you might design a gene drive system to spread through a species and wipe it out or take out certain genes. But we know that if suppressors are present or arise in populations, these suppressors can evolve and shut down the gene drive system. So we're kind of in this <clears throat> twilight zone where we could be toying with a technology where we could wipe out species that we didn't intend to wipe out, or we could be um, designing something that won't have nearly the impact we thought of. 
So there, here's an, a great example of where evolutionary thinking can tell us the possibilities, but it can't tell us exactly what's going to happen. That's right. We need to know a lot more molecular biology of, of resistance. Um, and we will, I think, eventually acquire that. But it's going to take some experimental work to, to really figure out which domain we're in. And it may differ for different species, right? It could be that mosquitoes we want to wipe out have all kinds of resistant mechanism, but it jumps into a bee that's a pollinator. They don't have resistant mechanisms, and we end up wiping out the species we didn't want to. So well, we will see. Yes. <laughs>